The start of the new millennium marked the push for a new destroyer, eventually known as the Zumwalt, that would replace the then still in service Spruance class ships. This was also the era where the US Navy thought that the threat of missiles launched by hordes of Soviet bombers had died down, and they could concentrate more on the literals. The JMAG series of simulations showed the threat of fast attack craft and submarines was significant, especially to blue water platforms operating around the shoreline. A ship capable of balancing the cruise missile threat and the threats of literals was thus needed. Planners then could see that ships in the future will be bristling with new sensors, needing a lot of electrical power, along with the headroom for future growth beyond that. This headroom is what currently limits the Arleigh Burke class a bit. Enter the Zumwalt. The fire support role meant that she was designed to have two advanced gun system mounts, with 155mm guns that could provide fire support 120 km away from the ship. These would be the spiritual replacement for the Iowa-class battleships then being retired for the last time in the 1990s. The power plant is usually boring part of a ship, but here it is very interesting. The Zumwalts feature the same main gas turbines as the much larger HMS Queen Elizabeth-class carriers, that is two Rolls-Royce MT-30, each producing some 36 megawatts of power. Then there are two smaller 3.8 megawatt Rolls-Royce turbines, for a total of 78 megawatts of installed power, all working through an integrated electrical propulsion system. The IEP allows for smaller individual generators to work together to produce the power needed. These smaller generators would also produce less noise, making the ship less of a target for enemy subs. Funnily enough, the way larger Queen Elizabeth carriers have an installed power rating of 112 megawatts, that is only 43% higher than Zumwalt, when the carriers weigh as much as 4 to 5 Zumwalt-class ships. This means that the destroyers were future-proof when it came to onboard power requirements. They also feature 80 cells of Mark 57 VLS, split across 20, 4-cell modules. They are essentially larger Mark 41 VLS cells which can either fit something larger, while also being backwards compatible with all missiles used on Mark 41 cells. Then there is the SPY-3 multifunction radar, offering great performance in medium to high altitudes. It was to be mated to the SPY-4 volume search radar, reducing the workload on the SPY-3. Then there was the extremely stealthy shaping, allowing the ship to loiter closer to enemy ships and radar installations without being detected and retaining the element of surprise. This is where the budget issues kicked in. Due to so many new systems, on a new hull, with a new propulsion system, the costs ballooned. The US Navy ended up paying $7 billion per ship when including R&D costs, while the Burke still costs around $2 billion, meaning three can be bought for the cost of one Zumwalt. The SPY-4 radars were removed from the production spec due to costs. Costs also killed the 120km rounds, leaving the ships with no rounds to fire. The worst thing was the numbers being reduced from 32 to 3, which is heavily responsible for such high costs, as a single ship only costed $4 billion, about as much as two Burks. But then, the cost wasn't the only reason. Mid-2000s again saw a switch of priorities for the US Navy. The Soviet threat was gone, but the Chinese threat started to rise into prominence. With them came the concept of surface-launched anti-ship ballistic missiles with extreme ranges. They also launched satellites that could help detect ships in the area to be hit by missiles. The Zumwalts were meant to operate in high-threat environments closer to shore, away from other friendly forces like the US Navy carrier battle groups. Zumwalts were only supposed to do local air defense and lob cruise missiles at targets in shore. Since wide area air defense wasn't their job, they lacked the Aegis system and instead used Raytheon's competing product, meaning they couldn't fire SM series of SAMs early on, they were added later along with Tomahawks. With the rising threat of Chinese missiles, and extreme cost overruns of the Zumwalt class, the class was canned at three hulls. Arleigh Burke production was restarted and a new variant was developed, which has now entered service as Flight 3. The Burke was still the best air defense asset ever put to sea, and the US just made it even better. But the thought of just how good a future-proof Zumwalt could be, especially with gear developed for Flight 3 still lingers on. Well, all the learnings from the Zumwalt and Burke Flight 3 have shaped the current DDGX, a 13,000-ton beast featuring larger radars based on the Flight 3, integrated propulsion from the Zumwalt, and ability to grow as the tech becomes better. I appreciate that you tuned in and watched this video. Make sure you check out our website battlemachines.org, 
subscribe to this channel, and share this video with everyone.